We're going to show you everything you need to know about how to install 8mm twin wall polycarbonate on the ends of your greenhouse, high tunnel, or hoop house. This has been one of the most requested videos by people who've bought our DIY high tunnel kits at Tunnel Vision Hoops, and there's no wonder why. 8mm polycarbonate isn't the easiest or fastest greenhouse plastic to install, but it keeps the heat inside your structure wonderfully, it looks amazing, and it can last 15 plus years. So my hope is that this video will make it a little less intimidating so that you can consider it as an end wall covering option for your season extension structure sometime in the future. Maybe the next time you're changing out your 6 mil end wall covering, for example. And make sure you watch this entire video because I've stuffed this video full of tips and tricks to help show you all the secrets that I use to make this process way less painful. As with any of these tutorials, there's always more than one way to do things, so make sure you follow any specific guidelines of your specific polycarb panel supplier. And be extremely careful when operating power tools. If you don't feel confident making some of the cuts shown in this video, contract a professional to do them for you. Now let's get into the details. In the materials needed for this installation, you'll need 8mm twin wall polycarbonate panels. You'll need your three major channels that you'll be using, which is double H channel, single H channel, and end cap channel. And I'll get more into what these channels are very shortly here. You'll need white breathable vent tape. You'll need metal duct tape, neoprene washers, one and a half inch by five sixteenths inch drive tech screws and three quarter inch by five sixteenths drive tech screws as well. And as always, I'll have all the materials used in this video linked in the description. So let's take a look at the tools needed for this. And, and really, there's not that many. You'll need a good set of clamps, a razor blade, a circular saw, and I just have a standard blade for lumber in there, a drill driver, a reciprocating saw, and again, I have just a standard metal blade in there. I just keep it in there and it tends to work just fine for what we'll be doing today. And a 5 16th inch driver bit for the drill driver. You'll also want a pair of sawhorses and a piece of plywood to put on those sawhorses. So let's get to it. The first thing to consider with 8mm twin wall polycarbonate is the end wall framing. Yes, it can be installed on steel or lumber framework, but you need to make sure you have more framework. Your polycarbonate pieces need to attach to the framework within the actual body of each panel, not just around the perimeter of the panels. If you did it that way, it just would not provide enough points of contact for a long-term successful installation. So I like to install my horizontal framework so it's two feet, three feet, or maybe four feet apart from each other, because that provides the points of contact you'll need for a good attachment. And if you haven't installed your end walls yet and you want to install metal end walls, we do have a video on that process which I'll link to in the description. Once your end wall framing is complete, you do have one more step before you can start installing polycarbonate. You'll have to install any exterior mount, doors, or ventilation components. The reason for this is that the front face of your end wall framing is precious real estate, and these exterior mount doors and vents have lips around their perimeter that you're going to use to secure the door vent to the framework itself. If you wait to the very end of your polycarbonate install, you might realize that you've taken up that precious real estate with channel, and you no longer have room to mount your door. That's not fun. So we got to make sure we get these in here and secure before we move on to the next step. Once exterior doors and vents are installed, now we're ready to install the polycarbonate, which requires the use of three main channels. Single H channel, which is also referred to as lowercase h channel, double H channel, and end cap, which looks like spring wire channel that has a dog ear on it. Single H channel is used wherever polycarbonate terminates within the face of your end wall. So anywhere there's a door, a vent, or at the bottom of your polycarbonate panels. Double H channel is used to connect polycarbonate pieces where they meet. This channel helps join pieces along their vertical edges. For example, this piece of double H channel will have polycarbonate on its left and on its right. End cap channel bridges the connection between your end wall polycarbonate and your top cover greenhouse plastic. Half of the channel looks like spring wire track, that will secure to the top of your end bow with self-tapping screws, and the other half of it has a dog ear over top of it. That will act as a roof for the top of your polycarbonate panel. Now that we have some base knowledge of the channels we're going to be using, we can actually start to cut and throw up the polycarbonate panels. My suggestion would be to start at one of your centermost studs that has a door attached to it. Start there and then work your way out to one direction on one side, and then go back to where you started, and then continue working to the opposite side of your structure's end wall. 
I don't personally like starting on one side and then working across the entire face of the structure. I think it increases the likelihood that you find yourself having to do a rip cut when you finally get to your door near the center of your structure. And this is one of the reasons I like to start in the center of the structure near a door to try and avoid this. With that in mind, we're going to start with this piece here. And based on what we covered with connection channels, we know that this piece will need single H channel from the ground to the top of our door lip at its header, double H channel from that point to the bow, and then single H channel at the bottom of the polycarp. We do the channels as we go, panel by panel. So we're gonna measure what we need for our vertical channels first. We'll measure from the ground to the top of our door lip for the single H channel then cut a piece that size. Next, we'll measure this distance to determine the size of double H channel needed, and then cut a piece that length. We'll also need a piece of single H channel for the bottom of our polycarbonate piece. When we cut this, we'll need to remember to leave space for the parts of the polycarbonate that insert into the single H channel on the left, and into the double H channel on the right. This means that we'll cut a piece that's a little bit smaller than the panel itself. So our panels are 48 inches wide. I'm going to cut a piece of single H channel that's 46 inches wide. And that leaves one inch on your left and one inch on your right, which is space for the channels you have to install. Now let's get these channels on a piece of polycarbonate so we can put a piece up. First, we throw a piece of polycarbonate on a couple of sawhorses. Next, we tear away the plastic protective coating on its inside and outside for just the first five inches around its entire perimeter. This will allow us to more easily slip on the channels we want to. These protective coatings do state which side of your polycarbonate is supposed to face the outside and which is supposed to face the inside. So if you do end up taking them all the way off, make sure you include a little mark in one of the corners with magic marker or something small so you can remember which side of your polycarbonate faces out. I like to leave the protective coating on as long as possible so I can try to avoid making that mark on my panels. With the protective coatings out of the way, we can now install our white breathable tape on the bottom of the polycarbonate panel. This allows water and condensation to remove itself from the panels and also prevents insects from crawling up into the panels throughout its lifespan. If you don't put on this white breathable tape, you might be surprised at how many insects actually die in those channels and begin to fill them from the bottom up. For this reason, you'll want to install white breathable tape on the bottom of all of your panels before you install them. You'll center this tape so a quarter of an inch will remain on the front and a quarter of an inch will remain on the back of your panel. Once our white breathable tape has been installed, we can now put the single H channel on this polycar piece's left and we can also put single H channel on this polycar piece's bottom. The tape makes it a little bit difficult to get the single H channel on the bottom, but you should be able to squeeze it on with a little bit of a wiggle. Now we can lift the polycarb panel up, rough it into the spot where we'll be installing it, and we're just adjusting it to make sure it's square along the stud in the bottom and driving a 5 16 inch drive tech screw into the lip of the single H channel. And we're going to do that closer to the door as well. And then we'll drive one screw into the lip on the single H channel on that stud. And here's what that looks like. One screw on the right and one screw on the left of your single H channel at the bottom and then one screw holding it in at the stud. But the reason we do it like this is now this is kind of loose and we can easily get the double H channel on here. We can pre-cut it roughly. It doesn't matter if it overhangs a little. In fact, it's probably safer so you don't under, undercut it. We'll cut this one six feet. We'll measure, cut, and rough in the double H channel on this piece of polycarb. Now we can measure for our first polycarb cut. 15 inches wide and Six feet tall. This will require us to make a cross cut and a rip cut on a piece of polycarbonate to get the size piece we need. We're making two marks on the edge of the polycarbonate, then using a straight member, which is in this case just a piece of the polycarb channel, and making a line across its width. We're then using a circular saw to cut across the width of the polycarbonate. For the rip cut, we follow the same method. We mark, make a straight line, and cut along that line with a circular saw. If your edges are gnarled, you can use a razor blade to get some of those off. You'll now repeat the process by installing the white breathable tape at its bottom, putting a piece of single H channel on the bottom as well, and you can rough in the piece of polycarbonate after that. We can then attach it with 5 16 inch drive by 3 quarter inch long tech screws at the bottom and 5 16 inch drive by 1 and a half inch long self-tapping tech screws through the double H channel and into the steel tube behind it. I eventually fill in the screws on this double H channel so they're about 15 to 24 inches apart from each other. Or if your double H channel doesn't have a stud behind it, I'm driving screws at every point it hits a horizontal member. I'm going to secure these a bit better before we move on by driving some self-tapping tech screws and neoprene washers through the polycarbonate panels and into the horizontal members behind them. To do this, we'll need to remove the protective coating on its inside and outside. We'll do this on both of the sheets we have up. 
at each horizontal member, we're looking to drive three screws evenly spaced across the width of this four foot panel. Here's what this will look like close up. You'll have a 5 16 inch drive by one and a half inch long self-tapping tech screw going through a neoprene washer. And you'll line that up with one of the channels within your polycarb panel. And you'll drive that into the horizontal tubing behind it until there is firm contact between the neoprene washer and the polycarb panel. You do not want there to be too much of a dimple when you drive this in. You want contact to be just firm enough where you couldn't rotate that neoprene washer with your hands. You'll mimic this step where your polycarbonate panel makes contact with your bow as well. Drive these screws every 12 to 15 inches along the bow. Now that we got the first two panels installed, we're going to go back to the center location where we started and work out towards the opposite side of the structure. Now this structure doesn't have a vent above its door, but many structures do. So we're going to show you how to trace, cut, and install polycarbonate panels when a vent falls within the middle of the panel itself. Whether our structure has a vent above the door or not, we're going to need a piece of double H channel that starts at the top of our door. This will line up with a single H channel beneath it. So we're going to measure and cut a piece of double H channel for here, and we're going to drive a few 5 16 inch by 1 and a half inch long self-tapping tech screws to hold the double H channel in place. If you have a vent that falls within the middle of a polycarbonate panel above your door, you'll need to take a few extra steps to get your polycarbonate panel ready. The structure we're working on doesn't have a vent above the door, so we went ahead and made a frame so we could do some prototyping to show you. For the sake of this exercise, we're going to assume that this opening represents a vent opening or somewhere where a heater duct may leave or something like that. And we're going to need to rough in a polycar panel by setting it against the rough opening we have. Make lines that go right through the middle of your framework. If you remove your panel's protective sheeting, you'll be able to see right through the panel and will be able to make your lines very easily this way. And here's a close-up of what that looks like. We're leaving space for the lip on our single H channel so we can drive screws through it and into the framework without that single H channel lip getting in the way of any vent operation. After you've made your lines, it's time to take it from where you were roughing it in and set it on a pair of sawhorses. You'll set it up so that the lines you made are somewhere where you would not make contact with anything beneath it if you were to saw through it. I'm going to use a circular saw to make this cut, and so I'm going to line up the blade with the lines that I made, and I'm actually going to turn the saw on and lower the blade into the polycarbonate panel. I then move along the line until I reach a corner, and I'll repeat this on all four of my lines. Circular saws don't cut corners well, so you'll either need to use a reciprocating saw or razor blade to finish your cuts at each of the corners to drop out the middle section you were just cutting away. If your newly cut hole has any gnarled edges, you can use a razor blade to clean it up. Here is what the cuts you made look like in relation to the framework. You can see that the cuts shoot right down the middle of your 2 inch by 2 inch square tubing. We now have to treat this piece of polycarbonate like any other, so we're going to add the tapes around the perimeter of this unit as required. We're going to add white breathable tape to any of the channels that face down. So this is a little counterintuitive, but we're going to tape the topmost cut that we made. That's because the bottom of those channels is facing down towards the earth. So we're going to go ahead and rub that tape on, and there'll be a quarter inch remaining on the outside of the panel and a quarter inch remaining on the inside of the panel. We'll then put the metallic tape on the top facing cut we made. And you can see that this is a narrower piece of metallic tape. That's because I cut it lengthwise. I did this so I can try to achieve a cleaner look after everything's done. These pieces of tape will be covered with single channel and I don't want a lot of tape showing beneath it after the install has been completed. Like the white breathable tape, my goal is just to have about a quarter inch of this tape showing on the outside of the panel and a quarter inch showing on the interior of the panel. We're then going to repeat this process with the metallic tape on our side cuts as well. Now that we're all taped up, all four of these edges are going to need a piece of single H channel to go on top of them. So we're going to measure each of these four edges. We're subtracting about a sixteenth of an inch from each measurement to give it a little wiggle room. Then we cut our single H channel. If you wanted to make miter cuts for these, you could also do that. It takes a little more effort, and if you think that additional effort and the additional improvement in appearance is worth your troubles, knock yourself out. For this example though, and because it still holds its utility, we're not going to do miter cuts on this one. I'm just showing you how to pop them on. Now that those are cut, we'll work on the bottom single H channel and top single H channels first, and then we'll wiggle in the two side single H channels next. And they might take a little finagling, but you should be able to get them on there with a good wiggle. Now we can get our panel up against our end wall framing. 
line it up so that the single H channel is square with the perimeter of your rough opening, and we'll be using 5 16 inch drive by 3 quarter inch long self-tapping tech screws to attach the single H channel along its lip to the framing itself. We're going to drive three screws per edge for this example, but the real guide for the screws is to drive one at each end and then every 10 inches to 12 inches throughout its length. This is what the piece of polycarbonate would look like when mounted on your end wall. Now that we know how to deal with a vent if it falls within the middle of a polycarbonate panel, we're going to pop back out to the end wall we're working on and continue towards the outside of the structure. Because this door is 48 inches wide, it has a rough opening of 48 and a half inches wide. What does that mean? It means our 48 inch wide sheets are just a little less wide than they need to be to easily fit up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut uh, one piece of polycarbonate so that it meets in the middle here. And then they'll be connected with double H channel and then another piece that extends to just about here, uh, the other stud. So now we're going to measure for center here, 24 and a quarter inches. That's just where the center of our double H channel will be. 24 and a quarter inches. That's the center of our double H channel. But there's a slot on the back of the double H channel. We have to account for that slot when we're cutting the polycarbonate. The measurement will be going to inside the double H channel to inside the double H channel, 25 and a quarter. So we're gonna make the width of this polycarbonate panel 25 and a quarter inches wide, and the height is 32 inches height. So we'll make our cuts, put the white breathable tape on the bottom of the panel, cut the single H channel that goes on the bottom of the panel, and then put the single H channel on the bottom of the panel and account for the space required for the double H channels on each of its side. You can see I've pre-cut the double H channel in the middle and put that on the polycarbonate piece as well. Now I'm gonna to try to insert this piece into the double H channel on the right. But if you remember, I preemptively screwed that double H channel in, so it's a little too tight. No big deal, you can just back off the screws if you've already attached the double H channel so you can more easily slide the piece of polycarbonate in. I can then adjust the polycarbonate panel and make sure all of the channels are seated, including the centermost double H channel. Then I'll drive a 5 16 inch drive by one and a half inch long self-tapping tech screw through the double H channel in the middle and into the framing beneath it. I'm going to try to line the screw holes back up on the right double H channel before I reattach. Then I'm going to fill those holes and move on by driving 5 16 inch drive by 3 quarter inch long self-tapping tech screws into the lip of the single H channel to hold it to the top of our door header. We're going to repeat this process for the other piece of polycarbonate above our door, putting on the white breathable tape and single H channel at its bottom and leaving space on the left for double H channel. That double H channel will meet the single H channel that will run along the door framing. We'll attach our channels with self-tapping tech screws as we have in previous steps, and then we can continue to move toward the outside of the structure. The rest of this end wall should go pretty smoothly. We just have two panels to put on, and we're going to put those on following the same exact steps we've already shown you. After we finish driving some screws into the channels, we're going to remove the protective coatings on the polycarbonate sheets. This way we can begin to attach those more permanently with the one and a half inch long self-tapping tech screws going through the neoprene washers. We're going to add more of these screws and neoprene washers every 12 to 15 inches along the bow, and we're going to do so through the face of the end wall before we trim the polycarbonate panels that extend above the end bow. So now we're going to trim the polycarbonate panels where they extend above our end bow using a reciprocating saw to make the cuts. These cuts should be made from the outside of the structure as you put pressure against the panels and the end bow behind it, and you can use that end bow as a guide when you're tracing the top of the bow. I like to start on one of the outside most panels, work my way down to the ground, and then go back to the start of that panel and work the other direction to the other side of the structure. Here I am finishing the first panel, and you can see I've actually traced the metal baseboard as well. And that bottom single H channel might be a little difficult, but if you're patient and you're careful, you can get it off pretty easily. I then move to the next panel and continue towards the other side of the structure. Having another person to help take away panels before they fall can be very helpful and safe. So the more people you have to help, the better. Where your double H channel extends above your end bow, you will also trim that to the contours of your hoop. And if you don't make perfect cuts, you can go back and trim a little bit better. As you can see here, I go back and actually trim a little bit more of the double H channel because it looks like it's protruding above the top of the bow. And we're going to continue these steps, trimming the polycarbonate as we use the bow as a guide, all the way down to the other side of the structure. And since this last panel has a little bit of a challenge with the single H channel at the bottom, I just wanted to show one more time 
time exactly how I traced the baseboard and finished off that single edge channel. You can now seal all of the top panels with metallic duct tape. This is necessary before you install your end cap channel which has that dog ear on it. This is meant to bridge the gap between your polycarbonate and your structure. You will adhere this all the way from ground level up and around your baseboard, up and around your bow. And basically, you'll have it secured so it's on your structure firmly, and then it comes around about a quarter inch to a half inch and it tapes to your polycarbonate. We're gonna do it from the ground all the way over the top. It does not want to need to be one contiguous piece. If you end up breaking it, up here, just start another piece, make sure you overlap, it's not a big deal. Let's tape this thing. I started the bottom on the baseboard and actually put tape on the baseboard itself and curl it around into the polycarbonate. And then I come onto the end bow and keep working my way up toward the hip rail, bending over about a quarter inch to a half inch of the metallic tape onto the polycarbonate panel. Here's a closer shot of Darion continuing where I left off. You can see he has about a quarter inch to a half inch of metallic tape overlapping onto the polycarbonate. And then he folds back the metallic tape onto the bow and uses his pressure with his hand to create firm contact. You'll repeat this from ground to ground on both ends of the structure. Now that you've covered your structure's end walls with polycarb, you've trimmed the polycarb to the uh, formation of your bow, and you put on the protective foil tape on your bow that curls onto your polycarb, you're ready to put on the end cap. This is the hardware that gets screwed directly to the top of your bow from the ground, right above the baseboard, over the course of the bow, to the ground on the other side, to right above the baseboard. But essentially, You'll install it like such, and it does bend and conform to the shape of your bow. There are ways that you can make it conform a little easier to the shape of your bow, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. You can start installing your end cap channel in one of two places. You can start with one of the ends just above the baseboard, or you can start with the middle of one unit spanning the middle peak of your structure. Now, if you start at ground level, you might find that you end one of your pieces very close to the peak of your structure, which has massive tension on it, which makes it really difficult to get the one end attached to the top of the structure. And it's also gonna make it really difficult to perfectly line up the next piece of end cap. For this reason, I often like starting at the peak, but regardless of whether we start at the peak or on the side, we're going to make it easier to bend these units. And the way we're going to do that is by cutting relief cuts in the dog ear portion of the end cap. We're going to make marks where bends will occur on this end cap channel. And then where that bend will occur, we're going to make relief cuts every six inches along that bend. This will provide a little bit less tension when we're trying to curl this around on the bow. Here's how I make the relief cuts in the end cap channel's dog ear. First, I flip the end cap channel upside down so that the dog ear portion is facing up towards the sky. Next, knowing where I have the bend on my structure and where it will make contact with the end cap, I start making marks along the end cap channel every six inches. You can put these closer together if you want, but I like to do six inches as a good starting point. If you'd like to remove even more tension, you can do them every four inches. Next, I clamp the end cap channel to a couple saw horses that have a piece of plywood on it. This will keep it in place when I make my cuts. Then, using a reciprocating saw, I carefully make the cuts in just the dog ear portion of the end cap channel. Because installing end cap can be a challenge, I'm gonna take you through my installing end cap on one of the end walls on this structure. Like I said, I like to start in the peak, and I use a couple of clamps to make my installation a lot easier. You can see here I'm clamping the end cap to the top of the structure, and then once I do that, I can drive a 5 16 inch by a 3 quarter inch long self-tapping tech screw. Where there's a lot of tension, I sometimes find using the one and a half inch long self-tapping tech screws can help an awful lot. They can help pull down that end cap channel when you might be struggling a little bit. Here's a close up of what that end cap channel looks like with just one screw in it. And you can see that now I'm ready to work down in either direction. Using my clamps and a little brute force, I'm going to pull that end cap channel closer to the bow. And I'm going to drive self-tapping tech screws every 10 to 12 inches throughout its length and one inch from its end. Then if the next piece of end cap channel requires any relief cuts being made, I'll make those relief cuts as well. Then I'll line up that piece after the relief cuts have been made, use a clamp to clamp it to the end bow, and drive a tech screw one inch in from its end. Here's a close up of what that looks like when they're lined up. You can see here in this picture that both pieces of the end cap channel line up almost perfectly to create what looks like a contiguous piece of channel. I'm going to continue to drive screws every 10 to 12 inches down through its length and move the clamps as required to take tension off of the end channel. Due to the tension on your end cap channel, sometimes while you're driving your tech screws, it wants to walk off of the top of your end bow. To counteract this, I use a perpendicular clamp so I can get a really good grip on the channel and torque it while I'm driving the tech screws. As 
I move down the side of the structure, I'm going to repeat this technique with the clamp holding the end cap channel to the bow and using a perpendicular clamp wherever I need to put pressure on that end channel to line it back up with the center top of my end bow. I continue this process while driving tech screws around all of the curves on the structure. Once you've rounded all the curves, you can more easily drive the rest of your self-tapping tech screws until you drive the last one on this piece, which is one inch in from its end. Here's what it looks like where it terminates above the baseboard. Because the end is a little sharp and we're going to have roll up sides going over top of this piece of channel, I like to gently fold down the corners of this piece of end cap to reduce any abrasion that might occur. I do this by tapping it with a claw hammer and then I use some of the additional foil tape I have laying around to further smooth out those corners. You'll repeat this process in the other direction on your end wall and you'll do it on both ends of your structure until you've completely covered the end bow with end cap channel. I then do a once over of all of the screws on each of the end wall. I'm checking to make sure the neoprene washers don't turn when I try to rotate them with my hand. If they do, I tighten the screws up. I'm also adding any screws I missed in the double H channel where the polycarbonate panels meet and I'm adding any screws I missed in the single H channel at the bottom of the polycarbonate panels and around any doors and vents I have. Remember that screws in your single H channel should be spaced every 10 to 12 inches through its length and one inch in from the end. Once you've done that, you're now ready to install your corner wind panels and your top cover greenhouse plastic and then ultimately install your roll up sides. And we have videos on all of those steps and you can check them out in the description. If this video helped you, consider subscribing to our channel and check out where you can find all of the materials used in this video linked in the description. Thanks for watching.